Hi, Six Snipes here, back in the inevitable climate disaster ridden future of our world, also known as Battlefield 2042, preparing you for the coming obligatory war between US and Russia with the most practical way to survive a literal tornado. That being, of course, how to use a wingsuit. What the fuck is going on? Also something about a shitty grenade. Taking a look at Post Malone's Rule 34 crack baby, I'm Six Snipes and this is How to Sundance in 5 Minutes. <laughs> To preface this entire video, Sundance was not in fact the operator I'd prefer to cover, that was Dozer, but for reasons I won't disclose, I chose to forgo picking that one up temporarily and begrudgingly deciding to field a character with a gadget which saw the most coverage in the trailer was leading up to the game despite a large degree of skepticism about its usage. See, Sundance has the interesting progression of gradual gameplay where upon initial usage and actually trying to fly the absolute kite that is her wing suit, you sort of realize that like literally every other air bomb vehicle in the Battlefield franchise, it controls in much a manner or as if every fast and design feature was really intended to make you eat shit head first in the nearest hard surface in your vicinity, nor will it fly like anything else in the game just to make sure that the helicopter mains and the five people with any mastery level in jets won't be able to make literal heads or tails of the dumpster fire, leading you like me to properly write this character out to be completely shit. Then comes of course the acceptance phase, where you can basically choose to look past the main deal and perhaps appreciate some of the more nuanced features with this character, maybe even make a couple plays after achieving a rudimentary understanding of the completely made up physics they tried to attach to a very poorly researched gadget. Fun fact, there's about 60 or so people attributed to the development the modern wingsuit and they are all dead. But yeah, I guess according to Battlefield, they just didn't think to talk on a roll like shit, why not? And after like maybe 10 hours, you've probably gotten the relative hang of the whole wingsuit deal. You might even have a kill with one of the grenades. Then there's this realization that if you just utilize the wingsuit in the stupidest way possible, you can basically dominate anything within a pretty limited range. All that to say that after like maybe 40 hours approaching battles in every possible way with this bitch, I have to tell you Sundance is pretty tight when done right, but given the chance whenever you fumble, the game will pass you the biggest L since being Italian in literally any world war. Let me explain. See, from the trailer, any remote, shallowest knowledge of actual wingsuit, you could probably surmise the fact that this character seems to be really good at going from a really high place to really far away destinations with relative ease, speed, and minimal exposure. This is technically correct, but in practice it's nowhere near as good as you think. The reality is that Sundance pretty much only holds viability on an extremely short game basis. In effect, you're not going anywhere fast in the wingsuit that's passed maybe 50 meters max. Get as high as you want, try as you might after the first couple of seconds of sustained flight, Sundance slows dramatically and becomes far less efficient and exposed in even landbound vehicles. The only way in which you can regain some velocity is by diving lower, thus losing altitude and ultimately limiting your range by a significant margin. Making you either a high altitude object cruising at speeds comparable to that of a Roomba or else someone in need of learning how to precisely balance the difference between the diving and the gliding aspects, where feathering both inputs is most efficient for distance but still relatively a slow and not great thing, and not the greatest thing, fuck. This basically means you need to be constantly decreasing altitude to get anywhere fast and with minimal abilities to climb with the wingsuit you basically end up with a longer range opposite Dame McKay where anything above you is going to be generally a no-go but everything below you is going to be seriously fucked. I can't articulate how to effectively control the gliding mechanic even with an hour, but if you have relative understanding of its controls, I can tell you where it's good. Number one rule of Sundance, always have the high ground. Spawn beacons and friendly snipers whoring off the top of a skyscraper even better tall spawn regions are incredibly cracked for instantly having the ability to come from the sky and generally ruin the days of several background campers and pushing squads in small scale firefights. Outside of that, try to find zip lines to get up quick, but in a pinch painstakingly navigating the shittiest ladders you've ever seen is still worth it when you get to the height where the moon suit will actually engage when you double jump. Number two, never do in one jump what you can do in two. Effectively bunny hopping between areas gives you the benefit of that initial massive speed boost when the glide engages that would otherwise fall off a third of the way into one consecutive massive flight path. Three, maps like the penguin one aren't going to do you any favors with massive outdoor regions with little cover and even less ability to climb up the tall objects and really get a nice chain of glides going. However, in contrast, maps such as Boat and Boat 2 are S tier because of the number of cargo crates stacked on fresh for the climbing and even in excess really let you actually gain high ground advantage with the wingsuit alone if you know your parkour. This now combos into actually using the suit for war, and there's mostly two philosophies. You can glide around with something like a DMR and gain better and better vantages, picking off hostiles and really being a pain in the ass, or else throwing a graphically high-powered submachine gun and just engage in some of the most brutal shock assaults and flanks of your lifetime, with the surprise element of otherwise shitty grenades and a 50-round drum mag on the MP9. Clever players, however, will basically always have a spawn beacon behind enemy lines for both punishing Sundance clones and McKay Batman wannabes who aren't smart enough to keep one eye on the sky, and having a point where your squad can push the team from two directions. Thank you.
unfortunately in a game where there's literally over 100 players per lobby, there's not much else you can do to impact the shape of a single match. Unlike most other operators, Sundance is a very kill greedy and lethal pick, but due to design ends up being far more selfish and focused on the smallest possible effect that is knifing a sniper that wasn't capping anything to begin with. And if you want to brother grenades, don't. The anti-vehicular homing throwable isn't even good assuming the auto tracking doesn't pee and fart and shit itself and chase some completely arbitrary entity you weren't even pointing out on the other side of the map. Aside from low health armor, you'll get little use from something that can't catch anything but the slower tanks and at best scares the shit out of a chopper pilot who thinks you're using a stinger. As for the cluster fire, I mean cluster frag, it does again hilariously low damage despite having a rather large radius and just gets out by standard grenades which work against both infantry and tanks. And if you even know what the defective difference is between this one and the MP, please comment because I genuinely couldn't tell you. For wrap up thoughts, think with your wingsuit and try to rapidly redeploy to stop yourself from dying to bullshit physics. And as for the grenades, you need kills with them to get mastery, so good luck basically. You can call me Jack the Ripper because I just knifed a woman.